It was very much like The Undertaker and Shawn Michaels when Undertaker retired him. It's everyone just slowly stood up and quietly, sadly walked out of the building that night. And we go into that press conference. All I got to say about Don Callis is, man, I can't help but notice he's got a big mouth and he's got Takesha right next to him, doesn't he? That was a scintillating question. And I think maybe after that, we're finally the Brian and Vinny show might actually just be the Brian show. That was producer Rob level stuff right there. Tell them that they're paid by a car. We all went to the AEW Wrestle Dream pay-per-view in the Tacoma Dome. What a dump. Just, they've remodeled in the last five years. I don't want to watch a show in the Tacoma Dome. I'm over that part of my life. So, it's all about I want okay. not, It is all about me. It's my show. Yep. I'm sick of these crappy dumps. <laughs> Dave, like, he was, he was salivating to talk about this show, raving and raving about it. Hmm. I thought it was a really good show. Yeah. Wasn't the best AEW show I've ever seen. Rico. Yes. Rico Constantino. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when Rico Constantino <laughs> showed up on the screen, I almost fainted. If you would have slapped me with a bass, I would have been less surprised. A bass, yeah. you say? Excuse me. You heard me. Maybe you mean the fish yes. or like the, a bass, the instrument? No, a bass. Well, he would have said a bass if he meant a bass. Mariah May versus Willow Nightingale. I must, must confess I'm as part of this match to go... Use the restroom and get some water. But I came back. <laughs> kind of a reporter are you? What's Please. wrong? You guys don't like women's wrestling? Shibata hooks a rear naked choke, and Shibata's shoulders were down, and the referee counted three. I don't care what happened in Florida in 1973. That is an Eddie Graham babyface finish when he wants a, when he wanted a heel to get a fluke win. This finish fucking sucked. The crowd hated it. Hated it. You know, people are upset that Adam Cole's back as a baby face or whatever. Why? But, dude, he's been gone for a year. So they obviously want to do Adam Cole and MJF. MJF is a heel. Mm -hmm. So obviously Adam Cole is coming back as a baby face. Yes. Will Ospreay, Takeshita, and Ricochet. My rating for this match was uh, one zillion stars. I believe this may be my new favorite three-way ever. And it was not just random stuff. There was a story here. And the story here was... Takeshita is the fucking man. I would bet you dollars to donuts that they did not want to kill Swerve and Brian Danielson. My God, I couldn't even imagine. On the same night. <laughs> That's a fair point. Especially because Swerve is from Tacoma. John Moxley versus Brian Danielson. It's not a fun such match. a sad way. Yes! It was sad. <laughs> it was a sad match. Mm -hmm. That's before we even get to the post match. The whole thing, start to finish, was sad. It was meant to bum you, the fans, out. It worked. It worked. It elicited emotions, which is what art is supposed to do. It was very much like The Undertaker and Shawn Michaels when Undertaker retired him, and like that's exactly what happened, is everyone just slowly stood up and quietly, sadly walked out of the building that night. But here, it was poor Justin Roberts who had to say, please drive safely, everybody, and then they fucking start booing this poor guy. Boo! Justin, fuck you! It's like, it's not that guy's fault. There was one gentleman that was walking by us, and he was dripping in Brian Danielson's merchandise. Mm. And he was wailing. And he cried. Forget my language. I can't believe they punked out my favorite wrestler like a bitch. And he was so oh, wow. upset. And we go into that press conference. <laughs> All I got to say about Don Callis is, man, I can't help but notice he's got a big mouth and he's got Takeshita right next to him, doesn't he? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That was a scintillating question. And I think maybe after that, we're finally the Brian and Vinny show might actually just be the Brian show. That was producer Rob level stuff right there. I need to work on your game a little bit. Okay, next. Rob's so excited and happy now. Of course he God. is. He's got some attention. He's got some attention. Exactly. Exactly. Hmm. He's disgusted. <laughs> he texted me today. So it looks like I'm feuding with Don Callis. Ha ha. That's what he texted me. That's not the way I, I took like, it at all. God. <laughs> I looked at his wiener and now he's mad at me. Duh. We're starting right on time this week. Are you pleased? Let's not pick on each other today. <laughs> you ever notice it like when I'm going to pick on Granny, we have to have a truce. But if she wants to pick on me, it's just fair game. All right, Granny, truce. Dearest, wonderful, and lovely Mrs. Gibson. Wow. Should the Empire boycott Don Callis for his blatant disrespect towards Vinny this past Saturday? I'm thinking of hiring the guy. <laughs> I like everyone's upset that no one asked a question of Mariah May. So, you guys see what happened when we asked a question? Yeah. 
I did. I was there. That's eviscerated. True. We regretted it. Absolutely eviscerated and humiliated. Well, never, Vinny was. Never asked a question again. I asked again. excellent questions. Yeah. Any other questions? I apologize for Anything being Anything interesting to add? Anyone? Don't be shy. What's Please. wrong? You guys don't like women's wrestling? You have a bright future in media. Thank you. I have reached out to AEW and offered to do a longer interview with Mariah May. Oh, God. Like I did with Brian Danielson on Friday. All so. right. Well, let me know what they say. Nia Jax versus Bailey. She watched it. Bad blood. That last jump, her sitting on her, I, I thought she was going to pop. <laughs> I, I gave that a six. It would have been the a only, six. It would have been the only pop there. God. I always thought it, her name was Mia instead of Nia. Her name is Naya. Naya. Oh. Okay. Yes. That's it for that. Your host this week are Boyd Pierce, oh, and he is joined by a miserably hungover Ted DiBiase. Oh, no. I'm certain. Uh, He's fair. just a quiet guy. Mm -mm. Grumpy, miserable, doesn't want to be there. We watched AEW Dynamite. A frustrating show, I thought. Not a bad show. Mostly a good show. But not the show it should have been. We're coming off a pay-per-view with the heaviest heat angle I think they've ever done in this company. Moxley goes on the rant. Your new AEW world champion. Says nothing about the murder he and his crew just uh, attempted. Seems like we're going to have some sort of war. It's not going to be Shane McMahon. And quit asking. He may do something at some point with this place, but this is not a Shane McMahon storyline here. Do you remember when Mick Foley first retired? Yes. All they did was build up that Mick Foley's career was over. And they played I Will Remember You, this Mick Foley tribute video. Yeah. There's people in the crowd crying. They didn't do jack shit regarding the retirement of Brian Danielson here on this show. You need to make monumental moments feel monumental. Yes. If you have a monumental moment and then it's business as usual, then who the fuck cares about monumental moments? You're going to try and sell another monumental moment and everybody knows that, well, it'll just be business as usual. So Adam Cole comes out for a promo and completely ignores... The fact that the World Heavyweight Champion was defeated, retired, and murdered. He's got bigger fish to fry. Maxwell Jacob Fishman. Get it? Because Fish and Freeman both start with F. Yes, exactly. Yes. I've seen a lot of people complaining about this. All Adam Cole has to say is, when I had that mask, and I unmasked, and I screwed MJF, and you all thought I was an asshole, well, look, it turns out that he's the asshole, and I was right. That's it. That's all you have to say. The Outrunners... Come out to party with the boys. I am assuming that FTR will eventually get sick of the comedy and turn on these guys, and that's where we'll go. I don't know. Things take place very slowly in this company. That's also true. That's I think they'll true. be friends for a while. Yeah. Maybe they can make eight-man tag titles. Don't put it past them. <laughs> the Elite do a promo. Don't say anything about Danielson or Moxley. They talk about Kenny Omega. Happy birthday, Kenny, they say. They got a cake for you, and they... Dump would look to be like raw chicken to uh, simulate. It looked to me like intestines. Perhaps it was authentic intestines. I'm no butcher. It was just a bunch of sausage. It was meat. Large sausages. It was some sort of meat. So the elite bail. The Dark Order runs in. They scream at the elite to do something. If this storyline ends with the elite reluctantly turning babyface to save the company, I may actually throw up. I may vomit. Wow. It's a sickening idea. Why? Don't do that. Because it's been five years, and, you, and, and, and you're proving the Blackpool Combat Club right. You're doing the same five guys out there every week. Mm. Don't do that. I'm sure the Bucks and Okada, everybody, are going to you know side with uh, the heels, and the young guys will be the ones that have to go up and save the company, probably led by Darby, which actually is a good storyline if they actually go through with if it it's the right way. If it, do you realize Shelton Benjamin is 49 years old? Oh, yeah. You know, he's exactly the same age as me. Why don't I look like that? Tony Schiavone announces a press conference with Don Callis, and alone in my living room, I said, oh, no. God. He announces there are no real journalists in pro wrestling, so he will do the questions and the answers. You realize it's all your fault that Don had to bury all wrestling journalists? That probably is. God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then Mariah had to whine about it as well. That was not my fault. And as the truck is driving away, John Silver thinks it's a good idea to sprint after them. Did you see his Twitter? He said, I got him. Oh, did you? Yeah, he caught up to him and got him all, he said. Jay White versus Christian Cage. Why are these men fighting? Were you not paying attention? I was listening. Well, you apparently weren't, because Excalibur spent the first two minutes of this match mm -hmm. in intricate detail. They did not mention it until the match started. No. 
Last week, Jay White just said there were two men. Yes. And he refused to name the other men. Yeah. Nobody named the other man. And I asked the chat, and everybody had a different answer about who that man was. <laughs> Why they couldn't have just said it last week yeah. and told us what happened? And, and better yet, shown us footage of what happened? 15 seconds of Christian Cage interfering in a match? No, we had to have poor Excalibur have to spend the first two minutes of this match explaining everything to us. Yeah. This is the most cartoony thing AEW has ever done, is <laughs> Hangman's crazy eyes looking back and forth like, did he see me? There is, in fact, so much left unsaid on this show. Yeah. And I believe the problem is that Tony Khan remembers every last single thing that ever happened in AEW, and his presumption is, you do too. Therefore, he doesn't bother explaining anything. There's, there's never recaps. We need more recaps. If you run a promotion just for the sickos, you're going to do 400,000 viewers eventually. Like, you got to run a promotion for everybody. The sickos can be the ones that buy tickets first and spend the most money on the merchandise and, like, are the complete diehards. But, like, you got to promote for everybody. Then you'll have a lot of viewers. Stephanie Vacour versus Ren Sinclair. She immediately takes Ren to wacky... I thought this was a good match. It had a very good match, actually. She yeah. takes She takes Ren to wacky Lucha submission school, but Ren, I guess, graduates and does her own, like, cattle mutilation and a Fujiwara armbar. Lexus King versus Oro Mensa in a gentleman's duel. So they're talking about these unusual rules. And Vic asks Booker, has he ever been in an unusual match like this? Booker says, I have never been in a match with unusual rules. Dude, you were on Nitro. Well, that's what that's what uh, Vic started bringing up. Okay, yes. The 49ers match or whatever. Yes, I, and Booker threatened to kill him if he kept talking about it. I watched this. I thought, you know what? Shawn Michaels, he needs some votes. Best Booker. He got over fucking Ridge Holland. Ridge Holland! Like, even Hanalei doesn't get mad like this. Tatum's playing with fucking dolls. Yeah. She pitched a fit that Jada interrupted her playtime. Jada Parker is the biggest baby face. But I think I'm supposed to be mad at Jada and be sympathetic that playtime got interrupted. Sorry, I'm not. Freeway title. Winner gets a title shot against Trick Williams and Halloween Havoc. Javon Evans versus Ethan Page versus Wesley. Yes, yes. It's an excellent wrestling match. And everyone looks great. Place is going crazy for everyone. Ethan cradles Javon and pins the losing loser who loses Javon Evans. <laughs> yeah. Didn't even steal the pin. Wasn't even like, he had the win, but it was stolen by that bastard. No, he hit a move, and then he got pinned because he wasn't paying attention, and he got beat. I will I'll admit, it's funny now. It is. It is. <laughs> They're just trolling everyone. I can still rant about it for hours on end because it's easy, but I I don't care. He's, he's just another dude. They had their chance, and they dropped the ball. Yep. Just another dude. That was a good show. I thought that it was largely an excellent episode of NXT.